Welcome to Marquee Backstage. I'm your host, Julie Milam. Now life can often leave you biding for time and searching for answers. I wasn't going out tonight But the liquor store was out of wine Bartender says it's closing time Sing the chorus one more time but it's in that time spent waiting that true art can be found. In this episode, our featured artist capitalizes on that time to create powerful lyrics and instrumentation. Reflection, anticipation, and stillness aren't just passing time, they're a life for this Tennessee native. Get ready for patience and a steady dose of honesty. This is Derek Holtquist. Sniffing on Christmas time. They strung up those red and green lights I drove it home with one eye It's a miracle I didn't die Now I guess I'm all alone On the couch by the telephone Where we're at tonight I never know Isn't that the way that it goes Derek, welcome to Marquee Backstage. Thanks for having me. Man, I'm so excited to have you here in Kentucky. You hail from East Tennessee. I do, but I have roots in, in, uh, in Kentucky. I went to school here. And my mom's side of the family is actually from Corbin. You know where Corbin is? Yes, I do. Yeah. Tell us what young Derek was like growing up in East Tennessee. Just uh, obnoxious, <laughs> a lot of energy, mm -hmm. uh, much shorter, of course. <laughs> uh, I always had, uh, you know, I had a, uh, I was an adventurous kid, and I, I always, because I was always small, I always, you know, my defense mechanism was to make people laugh. That was mm -hmm. kind of my role in the family, too, so it was funny, you know, tried to be anyway. <clears throat> you have siblings? I have an older brother. He's like three and a half years older. He lives in, in D.C. He's got a, two little girls. So doing well. So you you outshined him with your humor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he outshined me in almost every other category. <laughs> but at least you com you competed that way. That's you right. You could keep up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So in the Hulkquist household, you're making everybody laugh. Your brother's out here leading the way three and a half years sure. older. Did you get yourself into any trouble trying to outshine him? My mom, my mom told me that, um, when I was probably in elementary school that, that uh, I suppose it was elementary school. She she had a parent teacher conference and the teacher was telling her that they have to go outside to laugh in the hallway so that they didn't <laughs> that it wasn't encouraging. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, but yeah, I got in a lot of trouble. I spent, there was something called in-school suspension I was very familiar with. Really? Yeah. Oh, tell us one of the many reasons that you would get in-school suspension. Uh, it was the kind of thing where it's like, all right, don't let, if you tell, if you laugh one more time or talk one more time or tell one more joke, and then it's just, you know, you know that's what you got to do because they just told you it wasn't. Like, Your parents get exasperated with that? They do, but they, I had really supportive um, and have really supportive parents, you know. To do this, you have to be yes. supportive. <laughs> yes, you have to be supportive for yeah. sure. And I think most parents are supportive of their they kids, are. or I'd like they to are. think so. But do you think there were days when they were like, oh my gosh, is he 18 yet? Mm hmm Yeah. Constantly and pulling us he, into the office. Is he 21 yet? <laughs> yes. Is Lots he supporting himself yet? Yeah, right. <laughs> so what did you do for fun when you were young? Played uh, soccer since I was about seven years old. Um, I wrestled in high school. I was an Eagle Scout, believe Ooh, it or not. Very responsible. Yeah. So you yeah. followed your heart with sports. I did. I ended up at uh, Kentucky Wesleyan, a little liberal, liberal arts school north of here, um, and played for four years. And But I had had, I started playing, taking piano lessons at a young age, and, and I was in a band in high school called Feeney. We were named after the principal from Boy Meets World. That's right. You, may have you heard, heard it you, here first. You, you, probably, Meets heard, World. you probably heard of it. 
And so music was always a passion. I probably started writing songs in eighth grade or something like that. I was never a particularly good uh, guitar player or piano player, but I always wrote songs. Um, and so my freshman year at co in college, I broke my ankle. The, the third game or something like that. Oh, you're that. kidding. Yeah. You go there for soccer. <clears throat> you get injured third game. Yeah, all right. It's sort now of what storybook, isn't it? It yeah. is. And so I wrote songs. I've spent that much more time writing songs with my busted up leg. You know? Jason's in Durko Trying to get the charges dropped Get what you pay for, now he's paying for what he got. First thing he heard about when he came to in a ten by four, two bed, one door, gray coat, and concrete room. Life is short, not sweet if you're poor. I think what's in store might stay. Mix your blood with kerosene. Life is sure, not sweet, I am sure. I think you ought to have someone you need. But I got no one but me. I got no one but me. Ashes in the ashtray, ashtrays on the floor. It's been two months since he worked in that long, since he knew what he's working for. Crazy abstract drawings on free posted notes, and slow southern drawings coming from his throat. Simple math will tell you some of us are doomed. Credit cards, many bars, they don't make it down. When life is short, not sweet if you're poor. I think what's in store might stay. Mix your blood with kerosene. Did you know other people who had done that? Or you just followed your heart? I, yeah, I didn't know. So I knew one guy in, in Nashville at the time. Um, and this is going on now for, this is 14 years ago. And I like to tell people, you know the old story about how your dad walked to snow uphill <laughs> both ways? Yes. So my rent when I got to Nashville was $200 that first year. That's oh, great. Yeah, I got quite the What deal. part of town were you it living in? It was a tough part of town. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's a place where dreams come true, you know. So. Have your dreams come true there? I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. I'm working on mm -hmm. it. Partially, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, some of the, I have to remind myself, you know, my 20-something-year-old self, if, if heard me complaining about this, that, or the other. You know what I mean? Right. You get to make a living <clears throat> doing what you love. Right. Trying to make a living doing what you love. Right. Tell us about that. Uh, any time that you, any time that you take a passion and try to make, uh, you know, involve commerce, you know, it, there's a reality check. Uh, you know, big, the Nashville uh, serves a certain demographic. It, it's, it's a sort of machine-like quality to it, right? There's a lot of. Um, co-writing in Nashville, which I'm not particularly sold on. I've done it uh, quite a bit out of necessity. Mm -hmm. I write for a company called Carnival Music and they put out, you know, my, my music. And uh, that's just the vehicle that's that made Nashville what it is. Absolutely. Um, but there is a there is a huge demand and there's a huge population in Nashville that does everything but, you know, the traditional country route and uh, I have a lot of really great friends and it's fun like look now like if I look through my phone almost everybody I know is involved in music in some capacity right just about so. yeah and you can see your past 
yeah. how it's how it's evolved yeah based on the people that you met that took you to that next absolutely. phase absolutely yeah i mean i know all, i i could tell you uh, uh, you know there's so many people i know that moved to town to make it and then moved back to birmingham right you know right and they have seven-year-olds yeah. eight-year-olds you know and their life changes uh -huh. Uh, so I think holding on is a big part of it too, you know, sticking it out. And I, it's like a process of elimination, right? That's how you, f find, you find your dream. It's like you just hold on until there's no other choice right. at some point. Well, I think faith has something to do with that sure. too, is you have to believe that you're following the right path, the path yeah. that you were intended to be on. I've heard it said that talent is just what you're drawn to, you know, and that you're willing to spend time on. Love is a friend that you find at the end of your rainbow When you start it again just to know there's no way out Love is a friend that rarely depends on a halo And you got one less angel in heaven and one more die earthbound the size of your wings and the things that you cling to that own you the weight of the world or a girl hearts a blur beauty is suited for reverence in deference to order ah but beauty is holy it holds to the lonely that burn earth Sorrows tomorrow for Lord and King and Master By the edge of the world the Hollow and swallowed out Don't you know nothing is running the wind Through the sails of disaster Save for wanting to stay here and play forever without earthbound. you find at the end of your rainbow and you start it again just to know that there's no way out love is a friend that really depends on a halo and you got one less angel in heaven and one more down and it's earth
tell me the fulfillment. Like, where has your greatest fulfillment come from? Is it a particular song? Is it someone you've met that's been inspired by you? Is it a show that you were that you toured with, an artist that that touched you and said, "Man, this is you're in the right place." Getting feedback from peers, especially peers that you respect, is always uh, uh, rewarding. I remember playing at a place in Chicago, this little, it wasn't a dive, it was a venue, but it was in a rougher part of town. It was in like a, a industrial district, right? And this guy like had just been walking by and I'm opening up for this, uh, this other group. And the guy comes up to me afterwards. He's like, hey man, you don't know me. I just was walking by, the, you uh, played a song, made me cry. I said, all right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And that so he made the effort to come in and say, that, you moved yeah, me. Yeah, there's those, those moments. Yeah. And those moments, will let, they, they'll keep you going on fumes for a long time. Mm-hmm. It fills your soul. For a long time. That's why yeah. you do what you do. Is yeah, To, to share for that sure. with other people. For sure. So uh, what have you not accomplished that you would still love to do? I would like to, you know, in the wake of... COVID and everything, the touring has kind of been tough. I'd like to get back out there and do that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're working on a, another record right now. Um, Frank Liddell, Eric Massey, myself, Incredible. and some really great guys. Um, and that's it's been funny because we've been in and out over the course of two, two and a half years with, all, with everything that's going on. Uh, it's a change of speed for me, some different stuff. Like, like I said, it's a, we're trying to find some more joy in, in, um, in the music. They're pushing you creatively. Yes, that's a great way that's to put good. it. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. We're going, you know, we'll be back in and out over the next month and, or two. And um, I'd like to come all sorts of all sorts of things, but. I'm optimistic at the same time, you know. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's a good place to be in a good place. You've got a lot to accomplish. Yeah. And a yeah. lifetime to do it. That's right. That's right. But we've been waiting. Well, thank you. And thank you for having time. me. Thank you for Absolutely. having me. Absolutely. We love having you. Can't wait to keep up with you and see what comes next. Thank you. It's like hell and then it hurts to forget you We broke apart But I always knew You were a work of art that I couldn't follow through Oh, the blackest night Hold the keys to my success I just close my eyes And let midnight do the rest Though I came in here To get something off my chest I'll just close my eyes and let midnight do the rest And the water moves And the shadows wake And the midnight moon lay down cool as an empty plate On the barroom floor Between here and there Some highway john Stumbled on this whole nose affair Oh, the blackest nights Hold the keys to my success I just close my eyes And let midnight do the rest Though I came in here to 
get something off my chest I'll just close my eyes and let midnight do the rest You could cut the day, cut it right in half, but I'd still miss you, babe, with everything I have, and who's to say where I'll be when the tide rolls in back behind. The giving tree Oh, the blackest nights Hold the keys to my success I just close my eyes And let midnight do the rest Though I came in here To get something off my chest I'll just close my eyes and let midnight do the rest